Hello friends, I'm Dr. T. Today we are going to focus on atrial fibrillation uh, part 2. On the first video we asked these questions, what is atrial fibrillation, how common is it, what types uh, of atrial fibrillation we have, what are the symptoms, what causes it, and today we're going to ask uh, two very important questions. Why bother with atrial fibrillation, especially if you don't have uh, symptoms? how atrial fibrillation increases the risk of stroke and who is at increased risk of stroke in atrial uh, fibrillation. Now, why bother with atrial fibrillation if you have any symptoms? Well, atrial fibrillation was really first described in 1903 by Herring and for many years the medical community really didn't pay much attention to it. Uh, in the last few decades we realized that atrial fibrillation in fact is quite dangerous. In addition to symptoms that in some people could be uh, debilitating, atrial fibrillation is associated with five times on average the increased risk of stroke, three times the risk of developing congestive heart failure and twice uh, the mortality. In other words, if you compare somebody with atrial fibrillation, the uh, same age, same sex, uh, with a person without atrial fibrillation, the patient with atrial fibrillation has two times the chances of dying compared to the one who does not have. And atrial fibrillation is in fact responsible for approximately 20% of all uh, strokes and it can damage your, your heart muscle, uh, causing what we call a tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy. So, how does atrial fibrillation increase the risk of stroke? When we are in atrial fibrillation, the upper chambers of the heart, the atrium, uh, and in particular, part of the left atrium called the left atrial appendage, the blood does not flow uh, smooth and swirls around and increasing the likelihood of developing a clot. If that clot dislodges and go into the general circulation, most likely will go to your brain and cutting off the circulation of one of the main arteries in your brain will cause a major stroke called an embolic uh, stroke who is at increased risk of stroke in atrial uh, fibrillation. In fact, we do have a scoring system that helps us quantify the risk. It's called the CHADS VASC. And let's go uh, into a little bit more detail for congestive heart failure. H stands for hypertension, high blood pressure. A stands for age and between 65 and 74 you get one point, 75 and higher you get uh, two points. Uh, D stands for diabetes and S stands for prior stroke or a transient ischemic attack, a stroke that uh, lasts less than 24 hours. And the V stands for vascular disease and what it means is if you had a a prior heart attack or you have evidence of blockage in your carotid arteries in your neck or the arteries going to your legs. Uh, and A again stands for age 75 and older you get actually two points and S here stands for sex being a woman will give you a, an extra point. So all these elements gives you one point except age 75 or higher and the prior stroke or TIA where you get two points. And how do we use this scoring uh, system? Uh, if you have two or more of these risk factors you absolutely should be on a blood thinner because your risk of stroke is quite significant. Let me give you an example. If you are 75 years old or older and you have atrial fibrillation, so immediately you get a score of 2. And even if nothing else is wrong with you, you don't have high blood pressure, no diabetes, no congestive heart failure, you need to be on a blood thinner because your risk of stroke is in fact uh, uh, 2%. If you look at the five-year period, so your risk of stroke will be 10%. If you look at the next decade, your risk of stroke will be, in fact, 20%. And obviously, if you have the other risk factors, your risk of stroke, it's not 2%. It could be 10% or even higher. 
a conclusion. Uh, atrial fibrillation is the most common arrhythmia in adults. It's responsible for 20% of all uh, strokes. And strokes from atrial fibrillation are particularly dangerous, causing more morbidity and double in the mortality. And these strokes can be prevented. Uh, quiz time. What other complications can you have from atrial fibrillation besides strokes? And if you are a higher risk for having a stroke, what can we do about it? We'll answer those questions on our next video. And remember, your health is too important to be delegated to others. Let's take control. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel, write a comment, ask a question. I publish these videos on the second and fourth Friday of each month. See you next video.